Well, in the previous videos we've been talking about detection of ransomware. Where once you detect it, how do you go about it? So let's go on the SOAR aspect of this. So we're going to take this particular offense and we are going to be actually sending it to our SOAR platform. And we can tell the guy at the other end on the SOAR whether we suspect that this is phishing. You can select the template that you want. This particular one, phishing, is good. So notice that we have that offense 12 detected and I wanted to click quickly here because you are going to see a couple of things and that are without me doing anything are going to be crossed out and this is the automation in place so you see in all we've been doing we got all sort of IOCs from different components that help us detect malware but we didn't actually look at the email because in Curator you're not going to get the email that's part of the mail server so one of the first things that you need to do is actually go to that email server, whether it's exchanged locally, I hope it's not, in lieu of all the <laughs> recent vulnerabilities on exchange, and, and, and this is something more secure, let's say, I hope that the Office 365 on the cloud is, I don't know, but uh, let's say that you go to Office 365 and, and there is the mechanism in the SOAR tool to actually connect to Office 365 and retrieve the actual piece of email based on the information that is in that offense, so we have the subject, we have the different pieces of data that allows the tool to locate it. Well, that's that particular piece of email. Let's get it, get a copy of it, of that email file, and extract URLs, IPs, subject, sender, and receiver, and any attachment from it. Why do you want to actually do that? Well, because there might be pieces in here, for example, people that were copying on this email that they have not opened the email, they have not clicked or whatever, so they are not part of the offense. And that's important. Why? Well, you see that in a minute. After we gather all those uh, IOCs, potential IOCs from the body of the email, you do the same thing that we did before, which is, you know, well, let's actually check for threat intelligence. Now from the sort tool, it can be the same tables, the same stuff that we have seen here, or it can be another one. But now, this is an interesting step that has been done here, which is, let's actually take a look and see who has actually clicked into any one of those URLs that are in the body. So in here we extracted the URLs. What I'm going to be doing here is we need to see who clicked into those. And that's that's important. In the, in the sort tool, you don't know where the people who click into that URL, but if their URLs are malicious in that piece of email, well, guess what? Curator gets the proxy log from, let's say, blue code or any whatever proxy you use. And this actually performs an API call into Curator and say, well, tell me who has actually clicked into these URLs and provide me the, the, the user ID, whatever information it can be retrieved from who actually clicked on that proxy logs. Now we come to a point in which we're going to be probably taking some drastic actions on this person who got fish and others that may have clicked on that link. So we need to have a humans to validate that this is worth to perform those actions. And here you can see the type of text and, and, and uh, the information that you put on the person that you want to actually make sure that he validates all these things and then he actually needs to validate that this is a phishing thing so it's going to go here and say yep that's actually phishing i'm saving this and and i complete that task and let's in, and when we actually do that and if we go back to our task notice that th that action kicked in other processes right identify additional you know email recipients uh, let's actually put in any EDR tool that we have, a la Carbon Black, Fire, whatever, let's make sure that we blacklist all those uh, uh, URLs. Let's actually remove that that malicious email, the one that we took, because it's, mal it's, it's bad, let's take it out, but also for anyone that was copying, if they haven't clicked, so be it, uh, great. So let's make sure that we remove it because uh, 
uh, it is bad. Notice that this is a drastic step. This is going into the identity management piece and say, well, reset the password of these guys who actually have been fished. We don't trust their credentials. They need to reset all that. Send emails, notification to all the people that were copying that email. Say, hey, you know, they, this campaign is actually actually going. This is has to do with, you know, in this particular case, there was a there was a kind of a solar wind uh, a type of attacking with the federation. The, the ADFS was actually compromised, so you need to actually take some steps when everything that you have federated, you need to reset those credentials. That is actually very, very uh, painful. So now let's say that you, you want to, uh, one of the bad URLs is like this fatwallet.com uh, and you want to blacklist it, but, but you don't have the capability or, or the politically uh, approved ways of going from the tool and going into your, which certainly can do automatically, and go into that particular proxy and blacklist fastwallet.com. Well, what you do is that you open a ticket for the person to do that because they don't want us to do it from the tool directly. And once they do that, they close the ticket and then this task uh, becomes completed. So I just click on it, uh, you know, simulating that the fact that, that, that those people actually did that, right? So that that was actually done. And one piece that I, uh, forgot to include in here actually th there were all the things that were happening automatically here which is this is going into AWS and, and, and resetting the credentials that were compromised uh, because of the solar wind type of a type of attacking which ADFS was actually uh, compromised so I just click as is that would have been actually done and the piece that I forgot to add in here is the uh, open opening a also a service now ticket to have all the machines involved in here to be re-image I, I forgot to add that piece but you see so this gives you an idea of if you have this cookie cook, cookie cutter type of approach and automation uh, you're not going to be missing things to be actually done. You don't have to think, and when you have under the pressure of this type of attack, there's no time to remember things and do this. Automate as much as you can, make humans make the decisions where they need to make it, or the manual things that you want them to remain manual. But actually, let's make sure that you close this, uh, and you have also the, all the proof that you need to give to any compliance individual or any government organization that comes to investigate this of all the actions that were actually done. All this is actually logged and, and, and you can actually report uh, on, on all these uh, kind of things. So so that's that's the type of remediation type of action that you need to do. Notice that that this is a full API call, retrieving email from the mail server, actually talking, not only getting information from Curator, but going and ask Curator, hey, Curator, search this for me because I don't have that information. I mean, so a bunch of things being done automatically, some things are done manually, but I hope that this gives you a flavor of how you automate the process and how you resolve, how you close an incident of phishing.